I did in Gaspuru National Park and are a hot topic on every television channel. Anchors and reporters aren't getting tired anytime soon of making comparisons or remarks on the previous and current governments for doing enough or not so. But in between all these debates and dedicated politicization of the event itself, the need to understand why this project was so important for India, its forest and the people got lost. Hello and welcome to this new episode of Impromptu with Richa, a show where we love talking to people doing amazing things. And joining us today is a very, very special person, our guest, the man who has dedicated his entire life to conservation and bringing the cheetahs back to India, Dr. N.K. Ranjit Singh Ji. Hmm. Dr. Ranjit Singh is a leading Indian conservationist and was the first director of Wildlife Preservation of India in 1973. He established 14 new sanctuaries, 8 new national parks, more than doubled the area of three existing national parks, and has added 9,000 square kilometers to the protected areas of the country. Dr. Ranjit Singh has several prestigious awards and accolades, research papers, and successful conservation projects in his name. So very warm welcome to you on the show, sir. Thank you so much for taking uh, time to join us today. Uh, you've just come back from Kuno. We want to know from you, how are the cheetahs doing in their new home? They are getting settled down, acclimatized. They have gone through the trauma of transfer from uh, a over 24-hour journey and a, trans a transfer from a big plane to a, uh, a uh, big helicopter with all the noise and then being let off amongst a um, lot of human voices. But they are settling down. Yeah. What do you think makes Kuno the ideal place for an intercontinental translocation of such a vulnerable species? You know, considering the Namibian cheetahs are big cats of the African savanna. Kuno has been selected as uh, the best site for the reintroduction. Previous to 2009, when we had this international conference uh, on the cheetah, at uh, Gajneer, Rajasthan, and the Wildlife Institute found it the most suitable. After the stoppage and the restart of the project by a, another Supreme Court order in 2020, it was again found the best site for India in India. And uh, the experts, Cheetah experts, both Namibians, uh, South Africa, have been satisfied with it. But please remember that this is just one of the sites, the first site, where because it was established as a sanctuary way back in 1981, and secondly, it has been upgraded because it was hoping to get the lion and the, tra the, tra the, the translocation of 19 plus villages took place. The habitat greatly improved and the, the, the protection increased, so it became a better habitat. And uh, it Today, the best site, um, unequivocally. But as I said, there are three other sites where it must, uh, the cheetah must be put in. Only then we can say that uh, we have a meta population and that uh, it's not confined to just one sanctuary or park. And there are two places like this uh, which need to be upgraded, both. Uh, in, in Madhya Pradesh and one in Rajasthan. You you talked about the reintroduction of lions in the forest, but don't you think this can sort of uh, risk the lives of cheetahs that have just been brought from Namibia? Because if I'm not wrong, in the African wild, cheetahs are often killed by bigger cats like lions and leopards. And sometimes other animals like hyenas also during survival battles. So what are the chances that a deadly battle like this can also happen with our cheetahs once they're released in the open? given that we already have a very big leopard and tiger count in the forest of MP? Look, <clears throat> of um, the threats that it face, we do not have, luckily, the packs of uh, hyenas, which are a major enemy in Africa. We have single hyenas, which are no threat striped ones. We have no wild dogs in any of these areas. Uh, not in Kurnu, not in Mukundra, not in Gandhi Sagar. So that is not there. 
there is no tiger in Kuno at the present moment, but it's welcome back. There is no lion. There is the leopard, which is the least of the problems. Okay. Yes, the leopards are there. And the leopards are there because there is no tiger. They have a nest. They, are, they have utilized the empty niche, as they say. And there will be confrontation. <clears throat> but are we going to be chicken-hearted about it? Is there no... Is there no confrontation in the wild? We should be prepared for casualties. It happens. And please see, please see the report of the Wildlife Institute of India after it was um, the, the Supreme Court permitted in 2020 January, which says we are prepared to take the casualties. And it will be our earnest effort to prevent that. But it happens in the wild, and it will happen in Kuno. But as I said, of all the larger predators, the leopard will be the least of the problem. But yes, there will be confrontation. There's been an ongoing debate around why introducing the Namibian cheetah to the Indian forest of Kuno isn't a great idea, and that it has fair chances to even fail as a project. So I want to understand from you, what about this translocation is making conservationists across the country so worried? Uh, they are worried uh, for a number of reasons and uh, they are entitled to their uh, reservations. Some of them is they fear that uh, it will take away the focus from other animals starting from the tiger and others. But it is not an either or and there is also a belief that the cheetah has come in, the lion has not. I would wish the lion to come there. Um, when I established Kuno as a sanctuary in a park in 1981, way back when I was forest secretary, the idea was that it is a very good home for the lion. And lion had been brought in from Africa way back in the 1920s, as you perhaps know. So it was it was the lion, and and, and but the lion hasn't happened. And if the land doesn't happen or doesn't happen for the time being, does it mean that Kuno should not get the cheetah? And as they do in Africa, you first release the lesser predator first. And if they have one or two letters, then they cannot be driven out. Yes, there will be casualties. But there are casualties even in Africa and everywhere, uh, I'd just like to remind that Namibia is allowing 150 to 250 odd cheetahs to be shot every year. So, uh, not that any cheetah is expendable, not the least, but casualties can and will happen. But the other preconceived notion also is that uh, we have taken away the uh, thing and that government should do other um, other things. Why not both cannot wildlife other endangered species? And there are far more endangered species than the tiger. There are 27 which are uh, critically endangered, including some like the bustard on the brink of extinction. So it's not that they, if the government didn't do this, they shouldn't do that mm. or that they won't do that. And I asked the other question. What, uh, what did the government do when the the Supreme Court stopped the arrival of the cheetah in 2013 for the nine subsequent years till it was reopened. What did it do extra? And what will it therefore not do now that the cheetah have come in? It's neither, it's not either or, either for other endangered species or for the land. I'm all for that. It is no, not a substitution. This is an addition. It gets a new, another new life dimension to conservation of India, in India. Mm, makes sense. So this brings me to my next question, sir. The Asiatic cheetah has roamed freely in India and the neighboring countries of Afghanistan, Iran, and even up to Palestine since the 20th century. They were hunted down to zero by the 1940s and then eventually declared extinct by 1952. 
Our forests, however, all these years seem to be doing well despite of their absence. You know, I mean, the hunter and the hunted are both abundant in the forest of MP. And of course, credit goes to conservationists like you and the forest department teams that are relentlessly working towards saving the animals and the habitat. But still, the project seems to be very important for India. Can you please explain us what does it mean for us as people and for the biodiversity of the country? I would first like to make a correction that they were hunted out of ex extinction. Yes, hunting uh, 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 was a very important factor. But a, a greater uh, a reason for the decimation, decline, and ultimate extinction was the, the, the diversion and decimation and destruction of their habitat and more importantly, their prey species. Hmm. That caused the greatest uh, damage. Over the last couple of hundred years, the human population increased and uh, in the 19th and then more so in the uh, 18th and 19th century, and then of course in the 20th century, but it started off in the late 18th century. Uh, and the 19th century, you must remember, the cheetah were vermin. The government was uh, declaring them vermin, but then what happened was that the area, the open grassland forest mosaics were diverted for agriculture, for animal husbandry. And the prey species were absolutely wiped out and they were outside the purview of the forest department and therefore outside the purview of the, of the Indian Forest Act. And they were the first casualty to go. And after independence in 1947, the government of India, uh, state governments, gave thousands upon thousands of crop protection weapons and the first casualty was the black buck, which is the main, and the chinkara gazelle, and the other species, uh, which were the prey animal. My PhD is on the black buck. And I have um, tabulated that in the 10 year period, from 1948 to 1958, the black buck population of the, of the area of Saurashtra, where I come from, the black buck population had uh, plummeted from over 80,000 to less than 2,000 in 10 years. But before that, the, pro the process had started. So the land went away. And there was another thing. Unlike the leopard and the tiger, but somewhat like the lion, mm -hmm. the cheetah lives in the open. It hunts in the air. And because the prey was diluted, they would come out and kill what they could in those days in the grassland and in the uh, in the open fields. And therefore, they were visible. So were the lion. And the lion and the cheetah suffered almost the same fate. Please remember that it is estimated or it was officially announced that the lion population at the beginning of the 19th century when Lord Curzon went to shoot a lion uh, in Junagadh, in the gate, and he didn't shoot, all credit to him. The land population was down to perhaps 20 to 40. But the lion had two godfathers. The cheetah had none. And mm -hmm. those two godfathers saved it. The house of Junagadh and Maharaj Sayaji Rao of Gaikwadu Baroda. The land population of the world was in two princely states. And they, <laughs> they saved the land. Wow. But the cheetah, which was too late. As I said, no godfathers with the cheetah till now. So, uh, now, another as far as the, the importance of the area, the yes. other part of the question, yes, sir. was the, the habitat. Uh, you see, we've used the tiger to say the forest, uh, the for ecotypes in which the uh, forest lived, and that is an extremely important aspect because um, to save the habitat is, I think, more important than save species because you have the habitat, the the the, the and the prey, uh, then the 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 animal comes back. That is why, despite all those huge bags. Of, 
tigers and leopards and whatever in Prinsky era and the British era, they always came back because the habitat and the uh, the whole uh, gamut was available. So, uh, uh, and we used the snow leopard to save something more valuable than snow leopard, the source of the water, portable water from the Himalayas and the incomparable mountain fauna of Himalayas. And we are trying to save the river ecosystems under the ages of the flagship species of the Garyal and of the, of the river dolphin. So why not the most important ecosystem from the human interest point of view of the forest grassland mosaic, which is extremely productive, the most productive from the angle of uh, biomass production. And, 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 the, and, the, and the grazing area of the largest livestock population in the world. We have the largest livestock population in the world. Right. But and we have need to so focus on that. Right. So conservationists and forest department teams do what they do, and the government just does the stark opposite of it, which is actually more intervention and destruction of the natural habitat of wild animals. For example, in Panna, the Ken River and the Betwa River Dam project is allegedly uh, you know, being being said that it's going to submerge a huge area of the protected national park, which is going to put uh, the thriving species of leopard and tigers once again in trouble. And, and there's also this ever-expanding human, inter human intervention and population which you talked about. Don't you think, therefore, our prime focus right now should have been first conserving the forest and, like you said, the species which are already endangered and then introducing the ones which are extinct? <clears throat> Again, the same question. Why there should it be either or? Why not both? Hmm. Is the government incapable of both? Am I being given the choice? I'm or is there a choice? Government. No. Are you going to tell me? Are you going to tell me? Uh, look. Look. If honestly, if somebody was to ask me to power, party in power, what would you like more? To save the forests of India or to bring the cheetah? Unhesitatingly, I'll say, the national heritage of India already exists in the national park sanctuaries and the forest ecosystem. No question. But why should it be either or? Why not both? Yes. And as far as Panna is concerned, I, I'm on record. I was then a member of the state while I board of Madhya Pradesh. No more. Thank God. <laughs> why, why <laughs> because, I would be a, because I would be a misfit. Anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, the the uh, I'm on record to say that there is no water in the kit. The dam down below is working at 23% of the so-called installed capacity. And I'm on record to say that you will have neither the park nor Pani. But yeah. yet, people like me get overruled. The wildlife boards the are supposed to rubber stamp. Are, 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 are really used as rubber stamps, I regret to say. Yes. And uh, and it was passed. And look, in the you cannot have development unless you conserve your national natural. Because these are, so, do you know, that, that 395, 400 perennial streams come from from national parks and actually some of the most important rivers come from our forest area and they give the most important commodity next to oxygen potable water so you need to protect that you need to protect our catchment areas and our parks and actually yes how can you how can they be put and they could be uh, diverse and i keep on saying this would you divert or would you blast or build a road through the Taj Mahal? Would you blast for diamonds below the Khandriya Mahadev temple or under the agenda? Then why through Kana and Kaziranga and the rest of them? It's all about priorities and our understanding of what's important to us. No, certain. Look, conservation is the art of the possible. There is life is a compromised conservation, but there are certain rubicons that cannot be crossed. Mm -hmm. 
certain Lakshman Rekhas that must not be broken. So from what I understand, the cheetah needs a very large space to sort of, you know, thrive and survive both. And with such projects that happen, can we possibly imagine to have a huge protected and conserved forest, you know, in the near future for these animals? The cheetahs will go out of wherever they are. Kunu, Naradehi, mm. or, uh, or uh, because we don't want to keep them in captured areas. Yes, initially they'll have to, but they have to go out. So they will be out. And the and this is something that the government must realize that the success and failure of the project will be not in protected areas, not in Kumo, but outside those protected areas. Yes. And that is where action must start. It's already getting late. Hmm. And that is where you need to involve the local people. Look, despite all the damage that the lions do in the gear. It is the pride of the local people. They say, and it is wonderful to see that, that they have a right to live too. Yes. That this area belongs to them as much as to the humans. And they tolerate that. With it must, so that kind of pride, that kind of ownership must happen. But with it must come immediate compensation mm -hmm. without any kickbacks. They must be compensated for any damage due. And I must say this, that of all the um, prey species of all the carnivores, the cheetah will pose the least problem to humans. Because they don't kill human beings. They do not kill cattle. Yeah. Like the others do. The small Only thing they will kill is, is sheep or goats. Hmm. So... Those are the ones that have to be compensated. Otherwise, there should be no human con But they must be protected outside. And not just the forest department. And this is not just, as I said to the state government, this is not just the role of only the forest department of the state of Madhya Pradesh. It's the role of the administration. The district collectors must be involved. And all the other agencies that must be involved. I mean, when the first villages were resettled outside of any national park in India, I happened to be the collector of Mandla and the first two, three villages. The money was not from the forest department. The money was from the other departments. As collector, I was able to use that. And this can be done. This has been done by other collectors too. The district administration must be involved, both to motivate and the NGOs. The NGOs are very important. They are the catalyst. They do handhold. They are the via media between the government and the people. Also. They must be deployed. Yes, I think I can really relate with this because there was this one time I was shooting a tiger documentary in Page and there was a time when there were no tigers in Page but with the efforts of the forest team and the local people like you pointed out, it is possible now to spot tigers in the wild, in the forest of Page. And I happened to talk to locals who were serving in the forest guest house and, and they took immense pride in talking about, you know, how they turned from forest destroyers and tiger killers to actually tiger conservers. And, and that yeah. was like a moment of, you know, it, it was it was a very happy moment for me because this was something I did not expect to hear. So, so really, cool. Right. Wow. This is the this is the ultimate goal, and I'll give you one example. When I when I first saw and counted the Manipur brow antler deer in in um, uh, Kaibul Ramjao, I counted just from a helicopter just fourteen animals in six and a half square kilometers of territory. That was the total world population, the total world habitat. That night, I couldn't sleep. Next day, I went round. This is before the Loktak project came up, which uh, the dam, which has taken the area larger, made the area floating morass. And I told the local people um, that please don't raise the, your cattle here. This is the only place in the world for your Sangai, your Manipur deer. 
to uh, uh, in the world? And the reply was, this is the only place in the world for our cattle to graze. What answer do I have? Mm. I go there 20 years later and <clears throat> it had become a park. It had become a state animal. It had become a symbol and icon. The greatest, uh, the biggest annual festival is the Sangai festival. The biggest uh, circular circulation of the English newspaper in Imphal is the Sangai Times. There are Sangai taxis and Sangai restaurants. And I went there. They told me, sir, we know what, they know what I, I've done or whatever. But please don't try low. Please don't do this, sir. They will sink. And I said, how many of you are here? He says, 106 NGOs. Wow. The people of Manipur will now, uh, Ibobi, uh, the great Manipuri dancer converted into the Manipur. Manipur has a very good, important dance school. Yes. They made it as a, a new dance, the dancing deer. And uh, they especially invited me and whatever. And, and now it has become a pride. The people of Manipur will not allow it to go extinct. By the same token, this should become it should be the ownership should be taken by the local people. Mm -hmm. That's the job of not just the forest department, of the government as such, and of the NGOs and of the media. Yes. Including yourself. So that's why it's very important to create the emotional connect. You know, that's how people understand what is important and what needs our first priority. And, and I think that's what you're also talking about. There's another concern that conservationists have raised and which is about the prey in the wild because cheetahs, as we know, uh, they prey, they hunt on the smaller antelopes, gazelles, impalas, and even smaller animals like the hare sometimes, you know, even birds. But the, the, the prey that is available in the forest of Puno is much larger. So what do you think about this situation? Is this going to be a big challenge in the future? Yes, it is going to be a challenge. Uh, the prey base has to be increased. Would we need and a that is why of certain uh, African antelope species as well in the forest? No, of course not. Our own. <laughs> Our own, yes. That is, now, uh, you raised an important point. Look, <clears throat> to me, <laughs> the cheetah is not the end. It is a means to an end. Hmm. The means to focus attention on a new biome a means to save the habitat of the cheetah, including kunu, and to bring focus on other endangered species under the under the aura of the cheetah uh, necessity. Look, <clears throat> uh, there are nilgai which are vermin outside. Yes. There are black buck who are creating problems outside. Mm. We haven't got today the technique of capture and translocation of these species, we know how to translocate cheetal. Because cheetal are a forest animal yes. and the forest department knows it. But these other animals, like I said, the black buck and the nilgai are living outside and the, the government, the forest department has it evolved today. So, a very important concomitant that I've been harping upon and is now being accepted is that under the under the umbrella of the cheetah project, we bring in the South African expertise. Mm. The South Africans today are the greatest experts of group capture, mass capture of ungulates and translocation. There is one person who's translocated more than 20,000 animals. Wow. We are trying to get him and to develop training here so that we develop. You see, it will serve a double purpose. From where they are a nuisance to bring them to an area where they are needed. You will prevent them from being slaughtered in, in the areas where they are creating problems. Those black buck and nilgai need to be brought into these places. The kumu is ready. There are so many. And you will be able to have this technique which could be fine-tuned by the Wildlife Institute of India and then transfer to the various state departments who could have such transfer, translocation, rehabilitation units developed within them, each of their wildlife wings. 
so that from look as i have said you can't take away a thousand animals from one place take away 2 300 you'll prevent them from being slaughtered take a certain percentage off and then the people will at least know and will be to some extent satisfied and then gradually you can do more but that needs to be done group capture and time and the government the wildlife institute has told me dr jala that he is they are bringing this and they are going to have a seminar and i'll go and join them where this will be discussed and this technique will be tra- transferred like the management of the cheetah and its upkeep is being transferred from south southern the two states two countries to india by that same token another very endangered species the horn antelope which is unique to india it it it's the only animal in the whole world which had four horns mm. it is an ideal prey species for at least a singleton uh, uh, cheetah and it lives in the same habitat and it is on the verge of of decline and decimation why should it not be built up why can't we also under the ages of of this project enhance the population and breed them they are very good breeders they have two young in one year unlike the other and we could build this up and it needs protection so we do it both for the cheetah and for the nation the breeding back of the foreign and then the most endangered mammal in this country today is the caracal less than 100 left only in two places yes, yes. why can't and this is the idea when i established kono as a sanctuary in 1981 my first thought this is very good for the lion and this is a very good for the caracal why can't we we bring back the caracal the caracal was there it's gone we right. should bring it back because the uh, its prey is there the prey has come back i saw any number of ground laying birds i saw hares and there are the, uh, peacocks and whatever else i would want you to give us a quick answer to this question which is about the human uh, population which was relocated entirely from around puno what will happen to these people where are, where are they going to be moved because i think they've lost their homes and they've lost their livelihoods as well what happens to these people look no more villages are going to be shifted they have already been shifted Mm-hmm. they have been resettled okay already and they are happy because now the government is giving a very good package when i started the process way back in 69 at uh, that time we uh, because i was the collector i could give tax uh, and the forest conservation act was not there we could they were asked to select the site and we gave them twice the land they had we did the free transport we did what we can and the as we as we said it has to be voluntary it has to be voluntary as the americans say they should be given a package they can't refuse yes yes sir got it all right sir thank you so much for this wonderful conversation today you gave us a lot of powerful insights and a lot of learning about the wild animals as well and we really hope that the project is a huge success for india and for you and the entire team that has made this project possible for us Thank you so much so once again. Thank you very much.